This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. From Innistrad to Shadowmoor, what spooky top 10 does Nitsuhon have in store? Hi everyone, I'm Nietzsche Hone, and it's Friday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. At least, that's normally what I do in this series. From time to time, I do videos that are entirely based on my own opinion and have absolutely nothing to do with competitive Magic. And that's what we've got here, where I'll be giving you my picks for the scariest Magic cards ever. This is the last Friday in October, and that means it's also time for the final Halloween-inspired Spooky MTG Top 10 for 2021. So, when I say scary in this video, I don't mean that the card is hard to play against or really powerful. I mean the card's art and flavor is scary. In October's past, I've done somewhat similar MTG Top 10s, things like Halloweeniest magic cards, terrible cards with terrifying art, and spooky flavor text. Any card that was in one of those videos is excluded here, otherwise there would be a bit of overlap. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get to the list. At number 10, I've got Jagwasp Storm from Worldwake, and really, you could put just about any card that features wasps or hornets or any stinging insects here, as I've got a phobia of them. So any card that features a swarm of them or a gigantic version of one is pretty scary to me for very individual reasons. When I was four or five, I was at my grandparents' house and there were a ton of people there for a Passover Seder. At some point, I decided it was a good idea to roll around in the grass in the backyard and I happened to roll over a very angry wasp. It stung me multiple times and four-year-old me didn't handle it well and I screamed bloody murder and everyone at the house freaked out, only making me even more scared. Ever since then, I have a hard time shaking a visceral reaction I have when I see one, and especially if one gets close to me. And I haven't been stung by one since then, so I guess my phobia is good for something. So yeah, this card features what appears to be both a swarm and oversized wasps, and you can imagine how imagining that makes me feel. I put it at the bottom here because I don't think it's universally frightening like most of the other cards on this list. At number 9, I've got Magnifying Glass from Shadows Over Innistrad. The various Innistrad blocks have a lot of scary art, but I think Shadows Over Innistrad takes the cake here for the most part. This is because the set features lots of creepy body horror things. This is because the Eldrazi are slowly infiltrating the plane, and their influence is physically infecting people as they grow tentacles and other freaky looking appendages. The art on this card reflects the early stages of this, as the magnifying glass is being used to look closely at what appears to be a rash, but you can see there seems to be an eye embedded in this person's skin. If that's not horrifying, I don't know what is. At number 8, I have Nightmare's Thirst. The art here is definitely scary, as it depicts a person being held down by some sort of spirit or demon while they're sleeping, and that spirit or demon is sucking the life out of the person. The flavor text adds an extra layer here. It says that feeling of something on your chest is usually sleep paralysis. Occasionally, it's something else. This card gets extra bonus points for me because it not only depicts something that is really terrifying all on its own, but also because it's referencing something real in folklore and something a lot of people used to believe in called an incubus. People tend to be more familiar with succubi, evil spirits with a female form who come at night and absorb people's life force, usually through sex, An Incubus is the same thing, only male. Both of these beings were the result of people trying to explain the very real occurrence of sleep paralysis. In our own time, people who experience sleep paralysis often have episodes where they feel like they were abducted by aliens, and the kinds of things these people claim to experience really isn't all that different from what medieval and early modern people claimed happened, it's just that the entities doing the activity are different as a result of changing times. Anyway, the whole idea of waking up and being unable to move and seeing this thing on your chest sounds pretty frightening and is something that I really don't want to experience. But yeah, the art clearly references this phenomenon and artistic depictions of Incubi, which is pretty cool and adds a layer of realism to the creepiness of the card. 
At number seven, I have Juzum Jin. This is a pretty iconic card from Magic's early days. This is partly because it was an insanely efficient creature at the time, but part of the card's popularity also has to do with its impressive art. The Jin has an incredibly menacing face filled with sharp teeth, and he sports some impressive horns on his head, but the thing that really drives home how scary it would be to run into this thing is the human that the Jin is holding. First, this makes it clear that this thing is absolutely massive. Second, the fear that is being expressed by the man's body language helps put us in his shoes and think about just how frightening this Jin is. At number six, I've got Flesh Taker, the newest card to make the list. This card was designed to give you some serious slasher horror film vibes, and it succeeded. Imagine going into a cornfield and running into this guy. And yeah, it's important to look at the creature type here. This is a human, which makes it way scarier than if it was a minotaur or some other non-human creature. Since he is a human, this guy is just an unhinged enough human that he has a decapitated cow's head on his head as headgear. He's also wearing a butcher's apron that is filled with knives, and he's holding a cleaver in one of his hands. And of course, he's covered with what appears to be dried blood. The flavor text makes things even scarier, since it describes the flesh taker as a soulless husk of endless hunger. So yeah, if you see this guy in a cornfield or anywhere, probably a good idea to run away and hope that cow's head slows him down. At number five, I have Slaughter Games. There are a few cards in the game where you sort of become part of the art, and that's what we've got here, and it's an excellent use of that type of perspective because the situation is frightening. This card makes you imagine you have been abducted by the Rakdos, and then you wake up to see these frightening beings holding onto various sharp implements. The other thing it makes me imagine is trying to escape from them, only to be caught, and this is the last thing you see before they rip you apart with those same implements. At number four, I have Surgical Extraction, which has some spine-tingling art. It depicts someone having their spine and skull extracted entirely intact from their body. I'm not 100% sure about the flavor here, but because this is from New Phyrexia, this extraction seems like it may be related to converting this individual into a part-machine Phyrexian, which itself seems to be quite the painful process. The art is great here, so it's hard not to think about how painful and frightening experiencing this would be. At number three, I have Distended Mindbender. Eldrazi are pretty scary in general, but the art in this one is the scariest of them all. This Eldrazi was originally an insect on the plain of Zendikar, but Eldrazi influence transformed it into this terrifying Eldrazi insect, which apparently likes feeding on the minds of humans, like the poor guy in the art on this card. All those legs and tentacles and teeth are digging into this man's head. Also, the name of the card adds to its creepiness, since this thing is apparently distended, or, in other words, has eaten so much that it's already bloated. This means it's consumed the minds of a lot of people before getting a hold of the guy in the art. At number two, I've got Ad Nauseam. This is a truly disturbing work of art, and it tells a pretty interesting story. The undead creature in the art is definitely nightmare fuel. His eyes are pried open by some sort of apparatus, and he has writing implements attached where his arms were when he was alive. Beneath him, you can see a bunch of paper with the same symbol on it, and there are stacks and stacks of paper too. He seems to be writing the same symbol on these pieces of paper over and over and over again, hence the name of the card. The flavor text indicates that this person did some kind of work related to writing during their life, and they've been doomed to continue to do it in their afterlife. In short, this seems to be this guy's hell, where he's doomed to do this over and over and over again. It isn't clear how this happened to the poor fellow, but I figure he was cursed somehow to end up this way, or made a deal with a demon or something like that. So, the art itself is really scary to begin with, but the story surrounding all of it makes it even more frightening. And at number one, I have Phyrexian Unlife. It's kind of funny that Ad Nauseam and Phyrexian Unlife are number one and number two on this list, since they're part of a powerful combo that lets you rip through your whole deck with Ad Nauseam, since you won't lose the game due to having zero or less life. The two cards have more in common, though, than just showing up in a deck together, as they have incredibly unsettling art that tells a story. The art here is a little more understated than most of the other ones we've seen on this list. If you just sort of glance at it, it doesn't seem that scary. But once you look a bit and realize what's happening in it, it's absolutely terrifying. Flavor-wise, this card represents the process where one is converted into a part biological, part machine Phyrexian, a process they call completion. This individual seems to have just become aware of what happened to them as they feel their newly metallic face. Their new face seems fixed into a fairly stoic expression, but when you start to look at the eyes, you realize how horrified this individual is by what has happened to them. Those eyes express a whole lot. 
The eyes are basically screaming while their face is frozen in this facial expression. The juxtaposition of those two things is what makes the art on this card truly terrifying, and it really helps you understand how awful Phyrexian completion would be. Well, those are my picks for the 10 magic cards with the scariest art. If you want to own any of these spooky cards, you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each of them in the description. What magic card do you think has the scariest art? Let me know in the comments. If you want to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, including a bunch more that are Halloween inspired, you should see some playlists on your screen shortly. If you want to stay aware of future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can do that on Patreon. And thanks for watching, and have a fun and safe Halloween.